1920 by Robert C. Davies. The plaque is outside up front. Um, Robert C. Davies lived here with his wife, Louisa, and four children, Orville, Walter, Frederick, and Bertha. Um, Robert C. Davies established the first Negro colony up here. It was short-lived. I'm not sure how long exactly. Um, all, f all four of the kids and Robert died of like GI intestinal type issues, whereas Louisa died from pneumonia. Um, I can't remember the dates of when they all died. Their <laughs> grave stuff should be right there. I <laughs> know that Louisa outlived Robert by quite a bit. Orville and Walter, they died in 1916 and 1920. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't even remember. It's like deja vu. <laughs> okay. Uh, Robert passed away in 1939 and Louisa passed away in 1950. Um, the two boys, Orville and Walter, started the Davies Shoe House. Um, that's the reason for all the shoes. They sold that company. Williams Shoe House, and that is still in business. It's still Pokemon, right? Yeah. It's still here. Um, that's about all I can think of. Oh, wait, who are the weights here? Davies? Who else did? Roberts and Orville's that we know of. Okay. Well, those three have their weights here. We believe that they were, that their caskets were laid right there just because it's about the shape of the casket, and it wasn't uncommon back then to have your weights in the homes just because funeral homes just really weren't around then and they were starting to come around. They weren't necessarily popular as they are today. There's not, is there anything really paranormal in this room? We haven't really spent a, ourselves, we haven't spent a whole lot of time in this room. We've had teams say that they get a lot of response from the babies. Um, if you uh, go on our page, you'll see a couple of the teams that have gotten a response. It's right in the middle. Other than, as they said, it's not really much activity in this room. We did have a mason um, start some kind of a knock on chairs and ask Mr. Davies to continue the pattern, and he did knock on the bottom of the chair. Would you say the basement had the most activity? Um, it actually kind of fluctuates. Sometimes it's the basement, sometimes it's the back room upstairs, and sometimes it's the back. It kind of travels. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yep. This is the living room. There's not much anything history wise, but as far as paranormal goes, the two stories that I know about off the top of my head, there was was it a team or paranormal investigation that watched that? Was it a team? There was a team. Somebody put down their flashlight, they went to go investigate, they come back. The investigator had left their flashlight on the table. They couldn't find the flashlight. They're thinking, oh, whatever. So they check around. They can't find it. They're just like, eh, let's come back. We'll find it eventually. And so when they come back, they find the flashlight on its butt end, sitting in the middle of the table. And most people, you know, usually set up like on the larger end, the lens end, not on the butt end. Um, with the, and then it was the public that it was on. That's still another. Well, then there was another team. Lady had a water bottle, you know, regular water bottle, not carbonated, nothing out of the ordinary. She went to open it, and the bottle cap, like, popped up, hit her in the face, and then kind of went, like, halfway across the room. And it should not have done that with it being a water bottle, which was pretty wacky. Um, but that's about everything that I know about this room, unless there's something else. We had teams getting this, like, uh, 1920s, 1930s type era music. Some of the and stuff on. I've had a, um, <clears throat> the scent of a, uh, an old man's cigar right there, pretty much where Hope's standing. And in this area, we, yeah, we're a little bit of laughing, but not much. But yeah, that's the top of the year.
So our team is actually hosting a little fundraiser. This house is old, so it needs a new roof. So each block has like a different price. And so if you were are to purchase a block, you get your team name on there and uh, you get to pick out whichever one you want. My mom, do you know the prices? Uh, they range from 25 for the smaller blocks to 50 and 60 for the larger ones, depending if it's white or color. All the money goes towards the roof. Then you get your team name or logo or whatever you want on the block. But the history behind this room is the previous owner had a son, and when he lived in here, this was his bedroom. Um, was that when Deb or Monica was here? When? Which story? In here about the bubble. They believe Deb put the double the bubble. Um, one of the ex, one of the previous owner's ex girlfriends, they believe. I, you just said it. Deb, they believe that she put a protective bubble over the room just because before there was never really any activity in here. This actually used to be like the base room where teams would put in their equipment. But recently there's starting to be a little bit more activity. So now it's a bedroom, but do whatever you want with it. Um, paranormal wise, there was a team in here. This was pretty recent. Um, they were putting their stuff away. And so. One guy was over, which wall was he at? This wall. Was at this wall putting away stuff. And then another team member was over on this wall putting away stuff. And so they're having a full on conversation back and forth. And so then the guy over here asks the guy over here a question and this one doesn't respond. So when he turns around to be like, hey, why don't you respond? Actually, that, it was vice versa. Oh, it was vice versa? Yeah. Oh, my bad. It's, okay. <laughs> Basically. it's just kind of an important fact because he would have seen the guy walk out. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That makes it a lot. But good job. Good job. Okay. <laughs> but then basically when this guy turned around to be like, hey, what's going on? That same team member came walking in the door and was like, who are you talking to? Which and is a doppelganger type. Um, the guy never seen this person's face, but it had the same body posture, the same type of clothes on, and the voice was 100% the same. So, um, what I understand from a doppelganger is they can kind of take on a full image of somebody else, but there's usually one thing missing. So in this case, it would have been the face. So sometimes they can take on the full body form, but they don't talk because they may not be able to replicate the voice. So, and there's actually another um, doppelganger story upstairs that we'll get to later. Yeah, but that is about it with this room. Thank you. Um, there's just been talk of like a shadow playing, like little gnome figures. Nope. And <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the hallway. Um, so the previous owner lived a very bachelor lifestyle until his 40s, 50s. Um, he used to have a lot of parties here, and somebody overdosed in the basement. They brought him. Apparently they brought him back up to the bathroom, he got him back, he did not die in the house. Um, but that's just kind of like a cool thing in the bathroom. Um, let's see if we can get that sound going. Yeah. Get some circulation going. And then this, you set it off later, but let's get some circulation going for now. Perfect, thank you. This is Rita's room. Rita Wheeler. Yep, was that her last name? Okay. Yeah. Rita Wheeler lived in here, lived in this house with her third or fourth husband of seven. Her seventh husband did, did end up murdering her, not in this house. Um, but while she lived here with that husband, he was abusive and would oft, and would basically confine her to this room. Like anytime he went to work, she had to stay here. She wasn't really allowed to go see friends or family. So it was just kind of like one of those things where she was just pretty separated from society. And usually when you're separated from society for long periods of time, you kind of start going backwards, which is kind of the reasoning for the childlike stuff in here. There's been a lot of childlike responses. A lot of empaths and medium kind of get um, <coughs> childlike behaviors. Um, one of them, one of the first investigation teams that came in, um, she just kind of sat down here on the floor and was just acting like a little kid. And I was like, okay, whatever, because we don't have any kind of correspondence with children actually living here that's had any issues. Um, 
but then another one came in and kind of did the same thing, and then another one came in, and I was like, okay, we need to kind of investigate this a little further. So Rita's sister actually messaged me on Facebook, and she's the one that told me that um, Rita was here, and she was confined by the husband. Um, so that would actually kind of go in line with the childlike behaviors as well. I know that her husband did shoot himself in the foot. He did not die. Door right here. We have kind of pictured this out to say, hi, Rita. You can go in the closet if you want. Um, I haven't really heard much about the closet. But uh, there has been a few responses with the plasma ball. But that's about it right off the top of my toilet. When the girl getting her purse. Well, yeah, she, she wasn't was here. Oh, what did she? No, she wasn't no. here for that one, for that tour. When Joy and I were waiting, I was using the Spare Talker app, and the Spare Talker mentioned about Little Girl. Little Girl? Yeah. yeah that so we think when it's referring to a little girl or a teenager, we think that they're referring to Rita and her childlike state of mind. And the other response, it was saying, like, don't go, and it said, come in here. And that was While kinda, we were waiting. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of goes in line because she wasn't really allowed to leave. That's right. And another team had came in, and we lady sat right there where you're at Joe and um, had her purse tugged on and actually pulled her against the wall not hard but it pulled her against the wall a week or so later Hope was standing in the same spot I was standing by the door and she thought I brushed her hair and I wasn't even close to her but in that spot so hopefully we'll get something tonight there I got a feeling we will I definitely believe that my son Ray he um, uses the plasma ball for yes and no responses like touch it once for yes or twice for no or however but they get a lot of response like that care free to the noises the outside do carry inside so if somebody sometimes if you hear a car door nine out of ten times you guys are going to have to debunk it especially in the daytime yeah okay on to the next I heard some type of noise in the front room. I thought it was a car door, but I could be wrong. You guys, you he was talking. I thought I seen a mist go in front of my face. That's why I kind of. Okay. It? When you were when you were talking, mm -hmm. had a mist, a white mist, come right in front of me. It's got goosebumps. I probably yeah. caught it on camera. You seen it too? My camera probably picked it up. It was, that's good. It just come right in front of me about this high. It kind of looked like smoke. Okay. So I looked that way to see if somebody was smoking. There's a lot of <coughs> misty type aspiration, apparitions or smoky. And um, a little child like no me is not. Well, we felt that high with us. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's you just have a that big. It's feeling a whole lot so better in well, here. <laughs> left in the fridge. You guys are welcome to it. Snacks. Okay. Um, coffee maker works. I was told the single serve pump doesn't work. So, okay. If you guys should come. <laughs> and there's, did, did you, you talk about cups and plates and stuff yeah. like that? No. no, I didn't see a mess, but I heard knocking in here. Like somebody was knocking. That's what I heard too. Did that's you hear that's that? why I looked over by my shoulder. I, I heard a noise that sounded like a little. That's what I heard. And I was, yeah. That's why I came out here and he looked at I asked he didn't hear it. So, I, I guess me and you just heard that. Yeah. Because I'm sensitive to the paranormal, that's why I was, I was able to hear it too, so. This is not stationary, so if you guys need to guess it, it will move. Um, we were at home, we had a team in here one night, and there was water all around the floor. There's no pipes right in this area. I mean, I just the got a over there, it comes I, up the wall. I just yeah. got a hardcore cold chill just now. Yeah. Um, we came in one day, after the freeze, we'd had our wine bottles up there with uh, colored water just for decor or whatever. Mm -hmm. They were there all winter long. And this day was not nearly as cold as the coldest day, and they were shattered everywhere. Oh. Yeah, you would have thought if it was from the yeah. temperatures, it would have shattered on like the coldest days. Right. So, yeah. Okay, if you guys order pizza or anything, we have plates and okay. stuff in the cabinets. On to the basement. Throw. I just went to open the dishwasher. We haven't cleaned it from the last couple. <laughs> Go into the basement. This door goes outside. You're welcome to go out there and take a look, whatever. It's a fenced in. Oh, I'm weird. 
Well, down here, the previous owner had an ex girl had another. Well, the same ex girlfriend who put the protection bubble upstairs, Deb Snyder. She um, she actually ended up hanging herself in the basement. X marks the spot. Should be over here somewhere. Oh, yep, right here. Um, that's kind of the reason for why the metal ends and then the PVC begins. She committed suicide January 1st, 1990. Um, I'll tell that story yep. because I know that there's been a couple of different. Um, the death certificate says, like, I don't remember, 4.30 or 5.30 p.m. Um, apparently it was the end of a relationship. She didn't want to move out. The boyfriend was kind of making her move out. Mm -hmm. Her two noises, uh -huh. just now yeah. one up there, one up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so there may or may not have been a Dear John letter. Third one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard both stories from the same individual that there was and that there wasn't. Um, he had guns and ammo and stuff, so if she was a little bit crazy, she, he wanted to get everything out of the house if she was in a suicidal state of mind. Um, so he got everything out of the house, started to come downstairs, was like, oh crap, let me check the store real quick. Um, so he came, started to come downstairs, turned and went back up. He thinks that's when she Did went off the steps? chairs. Did mm -hmm. you hear first steps? Mm -hmm. I think you guys are gonna have a good night. Um, there's a oh, when they buried her, they oh. buried her with yeah. her dad. Um, but her dad had beat and molested her, and he passed away when she was 11. So this all went on as a very young child. So she's still not like resting in peace or whatever. Oh my goodness! <laughs> like, Stop is like right by me. Look at that. Yep. Every hair of my body is standing up. And you can also see like on the grave where they kind of like etched in her name because it was only supposed to be a one person grave. Yeah, they just put her right on top. Yep. We don't really get a whole lot back in there. You guys are welcome to investigate there. I don't, um, I think maybe a couple stories of yeah. black shadows or black mist in there, but nothing not fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> nothing fantastic. <laughs> this used to be kind of like the, what'd you say it was, Mike? Like the gaming room kind of? Yeah, this was the uh, uh, card room. Um, we do have two bats, Lilith and Lucifer. They have yet to hurt anybody. We actually thought they were gone because we hadn't heard about anything for them for six months. And then we had a public investigation and they popped right back up. So, uh, just kind of watch for them. They haven't killed anyone yet. So we always find that's a good sign. small voice. So if you just kind of like hear them just, yeah. Y'all want to come in here? But it sounded like what I heard was a faint little girl that said, Mom. I heard it, Mom. It was a faint little girl's voice back over there. Said, Mom. Yeah. It was like clear. Carry on. Y'all come in if you guys want to. Y'all have to stand in the door. We do have another water leak. They're never ending in this house. Um, we have one person that it really preferred to come in here and fix things. Previous owner. <laughs> so if you guys hear a water drop, we just want you. It's, it's a new one. Okay. Um. Why don't I'm just having so many rain for us. Goodness. Um, That's previous fine. owner of the house would basically have his parties down here. I know that there used to be like a little corner bar and that, like in that corner um band band oh yeah the previous son's owner the previous owner's son the one who had the red room upstairs he and his friends had like a little rock band um they would practice down here so the room down here tends to respond to what 80s like hard rock metal 70s yeah, um actually one of the band members had hit my mom up on facebook saying that he had a photo of all of them standing, I meant sitting on the staircase, and there was like some kind of skeletal figure behind them, and he's supposed to get back with my mom with that photo at some point. Um, I know you guys, you guys have a couple stories. Yeah. I was standing right where Hope, our hand is. Goodness. <laughs> I know, right? Sorry. And 
there was a guy standing next to me, and he got he's on the fluffy side, and he got scratched on the back, and so we raised his shirt up and looked at it, and you could actually watch it form, and then I had you heard that? Uh huh. That was another uh, female voice. That's the same one I just heard. Yeah, I heard that one. It was the clear again. Okay. It was louder too. Yeah. I heard that one. Had a guy. Know? An old man laughed in my ear. I heard it twice. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. You all heard that, right? I didn't hear it at the I time. Yeah. Uh, me and her heard it. Like, clear. Because some people are more sensitive than other people, and some people are more sensitive at certain times than other people. I, so, it keeps on saying mom. It said mom twice. I don't know. I don't know why she's saying mom. Hey, maybe, I mean, with it, if it's a child, like, maybe it's something another. Because it sounds like a little girl, and the spirit talker came but through the little girl. Yeah, that's probably what I said. My blood on my leg, or my head. Anyways, the story of Raymond. Oh, the story of Raymond. Okay, so um, we had a public investigation. We had a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people. I don't remember. There was some chaos. Uh, half of them left. We were left with seven. Ooh. There was like nine or twelve people here. Fourteen. Yeah, it was fourteen because it got cut in half. Because right. you guys told me because like four right. people left because the weed smell and the three people. Were so we're all down here. Weeds and they left. Um, except for my son Ray. One of the investigators that night can see in the dark, and Ray walked in front of him. He's standing there by the doorway. Ray walks in front of him, and this investigator doesn't see him walk across the doorway. So he's comes over and he says, "Oh, just gonna let you know." Your son just walked in front of me. I didn't see him. I couldn't see him, which is a really big deal for this individual. Um, we have flashlights and stuff all on the little ledge over there. We're all kind of standing back in this area, trying to get response. Uh, Ray is mildly autistic, and so he likes to wear cowboy boots that have the noisy bottom, not the rubber soles, because he wants everybody to know he's walking as noisy as he possibly can at 19 years old. And, uh, He's walking across the lights as quiet as can be, not making a sound. So at this point, I'm like, hey, Mike, <laughs> he just walked in front. I couldn't see him. Uh, now we're watching him walk in front of us, not making a sound. Like, these are really big deals with my son. And uh, at that time, we hear this really loud laugh behind us. Nobody's back there. And then that's when Blake got scratched. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly how it happened. Um, another instance, we had some of our team down here. We were kind of irritating it a little bit. Instigation, a little it's bit. Like, hmm. As long as it comes back from that. Bus. That was a whimper. Mm -hmm. And a black mist came out from that room, and it like circled us. We had our backs and like holding hands, like it was circling us. It was just a mist around in the circle. It was it was the craziest thing. That's me on the chair. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> They're making me more receptive to everything. <laughs> yeah, like we're trying to listen. Yeah. We get a lot of responses. K2s. Um, we were doing a team, a tour with that one team I was talking yes, about my son. Right, yeah. They would set up their devices in every room and you know, before I started. And we got down here and I was talking about Ray's things that happened with Ray, my son, and their stuff just went crazy. And uh I'd stopped talking about him and they just all died down. And so I'd talk about him again, and they would all just start going crazy. And we did that three or four times, yeah. and just they lit up every time just to kind just, of see. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can kind of say we were trying to play with a little bit to find out what the real results were. And yeah. as she said, it, it was phenomenal the way things happened. Guess what we're doing tomorrow? Because that's going to bug me. Oh, my God. I don't know if it was somebody's foot scooting, but it sounded like a male saying hello. But it could have been somebody's foot scooting. It could have been mine because I've been over here doing this the entire time. Yeah. Now, especially down here and up in Ray's room, you guys could be talking to other entities, and you'll just you'll feel a difference in pressure and everything. Just like any other paranormal location, we have that one dominant one that kind of makes the other ones stop talking, and you guys will just you'll know the difference. The Atmosphere changes, the temperature changes, the responses and the answers if you guys have spirit boxes, that all changes. Um, you can be getting good results and then suddenly it'll just stop. 
there is something back over over there on the other side of that wall there that uh, has a tendency of wanting to shadow play with you a lot and just be receptive to it. At the time, I was we was having something going on. And I was kind of bored, so I decided to mess with it a little bit. It kind of had me red eyes. I'm actually starting to get a headache here in the corner. So as we walked in, we were already experienced activities. I know before I even pulled into the driveway, I was getting like a heavy, heavy feeling. Staying here in the corner. Like a heavy, heavy energy. Last few minutes. Yeah. That power one of you definitely likes to only let you talk to who it wants to when it wants you to let you talk to mm -hmm. it. But that's about it. I think something just moved in front of you. <laughs> something moved in front of you. I think, yeah. I think my camera picked it up. Like that literally moved in front of you. Um, there is watch well, probably. So there's like by the stairs, there's like this little like you can see the brick. You speak yeah. cool shoot. It's a cool shoot. My mom found it that it was a cool secret room. It is not. There's a picture of Mickey Mouse mm -hmm. back there. But yeah. If you ever find a chair or look at the wall, there's like a picture of Mickey Mouse or some swipe. There's an access from the outside. We haven't been is in it yet. It's like a, a notebook that somebody colored. Oh, okay. Out. <laughs> I haven't seen it obviously you can tell that. <laughs> But down the basement, this is the most active room. Um, don't hesitate to enjoy it. We will. Definitely will. None of the light bulbs will burn. You can take them, twist them on by your hand, or pull the switch. Okay. Wow. I don't know if it was just me. I wasn't going to say anything, but I heard a male voice saying, get out. And then a few seconds later, it said, now. I don't know if Did you heard it? that. No, yes, I didn't so. hear that. I'm getting dizzy, though. But it, so before we even got up here, like, since I walked to the door, it said, get out. Now. Did it? My camera probably picked it up. I didn't think I was I tried turning on that automatic fan that Indy installed. I can't turn it on. Oh my goodness. Can you turn it on? The one in the background. Good folks, again. Yeah. Are there any evil entities here? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with yeah. That's part of why I heard get out now as soon as we went up. Get ready to go upstairs. Yeah, we've heard that as well. Yeah. You did? That's what I heard. Oh, In the past, we've heard that. All right. It's a little All right. So up here. So originally, when the house was built, it was. Why am I having so many brain farts? It was the two-story. It was the main Something's level. Affecting you today. And downstairs, and this was an attic. The previous owner had added on to make this like an upstairs two-story. Um, the other girlfriend of the previous, the other ex-girlfriend of the previous owner, that's all I have to say, Monica, her name was Monica. She is alive now and currently resides in Florida. Mm -hmm. 
Um, she practiced what she practiced witch witchcraft like uh, like, like crystal medium. ball and did rituals stuff. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Up here, she would use mirrors and kind of like make kind of like highways. But one thing that we found out is that she would open the, open portals and open things and let things come in, but not necessarily ask them to leave or shut them. We're not sure if she just didn't know how to close them properly or if she did it on purpose. I heard it was probably a curse. Could have been. You never know. Monica I know it was little. the end of a relationship. But again, she wasn't wanted to end and the boyfriend kind of did. So she opened the portals and everything, invited things in, didn't make anything leave. Yeah. yeah. Um, the second story. Oh, yeah, that was bad with you. Um, so when the previous owner, he had rented this house out. And so after, after like, what, eight months of those tenants not paying rent, he's like, all right, get out. Um, so we all had to come in and come clean up the house. It was an absolute treacherous. But basically, my mom, her brother Ray, and another individual Bless were you. here Bless you. cleaning. And so that railway didn't used to be there, so they're taking a break. My mom's leaning up against it talking to the other individual and so then so like as a mom you kind of like feel when your kids are around or I guess any parent but basically my brother came up the stairs and it looked exactly like my brother cowboy boots bouncy curls except it didn't have any eyes it's actually black and so my mom's looking at this figure pretending imitating my brother I'm like okay what like what what's that so the other individual was like hope oh, hope oh, hey you okay and was you were like just kind of like in shock i mean obviously who wouldn't be and then uh a little bit later here comes my brother walking down steps get her a bottle of water cooler down throw water in the fridge yeah um but yeah that's about it that is the well it was the first case of a doppelganger the second one was the one downstairs in the red room but yeah they do happen yeah. I'm sorry, it's getting really hot. There was another male voice back there in that room that I heard. It said, "Hey." Um, sitting up here, if you investigate, a lot of times there's a lot of shadow figures that kind of play hide and seek. They kind of come around the corner and peek up the steps. Um, they seem to be just as curious about you as you are them, but they're just as skittish as some of the newer investigators. Um, you start getting too close to them, they'll kind of shy away and um, go back downstairs or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's lots of teams that talk about things in the stairway. Um, uh, there is a bathroom up here, right here. It is not operational, um, but that's... Yeah, there's a water hooked up up here. Did you tell me about the guy that was the team that was uh, filming backwards? And as they did, coming up to landing there, they had um, the figure of two legs coming out around the kitchen. No, but you just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, he actually, he actually showed me the video as he back, backed out. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go to this one. Get downstairs. Let's see. Okay, we'll see. Okay, we'll see. Okay, we'll see. I heard another one say behind you. That's why I looked behind me. I'm going to bring the other facing out. Sorry. That's a cold jacuzzi. That doesn't work yet. Yeah, previous owner. We call this room the boom boom room. As I said, previous owner. That's the lifestyle. Um, Another team actually called it a boom boom room. Some style. Yeah, I mean, it fits. Basically, some of the stories that are up in this room is, one, there was an investigation. This room does not like having the door closed. There has been multiple occasions where the door is completely shut, and then the door will start jiggling and moving violently as if someone's trying to get in, but the door is locked, but there's a lock on this door. Um, there is kind of like a weird raise in this door, so it can be hard to shut, so just kind of watch out for that. Um, 
there's honestly been all kinds of activities here. There's been, um, I know that I was actually here with this and we did some candle magic kind of stuff up here. Um, there's a lot of shadow play in the mirror, in the mirrors with Andy. Um, I sat up here with a pair of sisters for about 45 minutes, we just watched each other's faces like morph. Um, called somebody's name repeatedly on the security box, but I can't remember what it was. Wouldn't it Christy? The lady's name no. was Christy from that team? No, I'm talking about the pair of sisters. Okay. Um, but then there was another instance with ISPI, and it called one of their investigators. She wasn't even up here. Um, a couple of them were messed with the Ouija board. The investigator was downstairs and called her up here and it attached to her as soon as she came up. So I took her downstairs, um, got her all squared away. We came back in. The ones upstairs came back upstairs to investigate again. The ones downstairs went back downstairs. And it called her up here a second time as soon as she came up here and attached to her. So we didn't let her come up and that. Um, there's been sightings of a very tall figure of a guy standing in the doorway. Um, what else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure why I'm not saying very quickly. There's like a million stories in the back here. The mirror over here in the wall, when we first started investigating um, here, yeah. uh, we had two mirrors. Um, the taller one with the double edge. So um, we had two mirrors up here. Um, one of the previous homeowners still owned the house and was letting us investigate. He was going to try to sell the house. He wanted all the paranormal stuff out of here so we couldn't better him out. There was a lot of stories of uh, little dark creatures that would come out of the mirror and do things um, from the other teams. So I didn't really want it on my property that I lived in. Um, so we went along the riverside and through those two mirrors, all the truck, they shattered along the riverbank. Um, was it Ray's open house? It was. You guys were cleaning out the garage for Ray's open house. So again, Ray, uh, I actually that just clicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were cleaning the garage out for Ray's open house uh, from high school and that mirror showed up in the corner. We didn't have any mirrors in my garage. so. Um, the ones with the gold trim we bought from Walmart. These other two I think we got from the Rogers store. Um, so we made a new product back in here because I just don't have all my property that we live in. So. Yeah, but I think that's it. I uh, yeah, that's about it. It kind of calls, um, if you guys get this response up here, and it calls somebody's name repeatedly, watch that person. It's going to try to separate that person. It's going to try to attach to the person. It does like to split you up in the house. Yes, it does. Like to just try to separate Draw you in somewhere, yeah. Or make you feel sick. And then you're now separated from the group, and that's when it will try to attach to you. So if somebody's not feeling good, I just suggest at least somebody go down with you. And it'll make you feel dizzy and nauseous, uh, severe headaches. That way, if you guys are in a certain room, now you don't feel good and you think it's from that room, so now you're going to leave that room because you're not feeling good and now you're separated from the group and that's what it attaches to you. And then when you leave, you definitely want to make sure to tell it to stay here. No matter how silly you think you sound, tell it to stay here. Really it will wreck havoc at your home. <laughs> and it's hard to get rid of. Yeah, that horse bed room, uh, well, room we went into, I felt Sweaty, dizzy, lightheaded. And I had to let hold on to the wall to go into the other room. So you guys gotta be careful with that because they'll try to attach to you. Thanks for that. Let's go downstairs at school. Yeah. I'm trying it's to find cool that. It's cool down here, but not very quickly. But yeah, that's about yeah. it. Welcome to the neighbor's house.
I'm thinking about personal clarity. It feels a little bit up. Well, he put that other fan in. But if I can get Grandma to find that other air conditioner with the kitchen window, and that'll help push air up here.